Hello, you beautiful people. You'd be surprised the amount of times I sit down here to record a podcast intro. And because some of this is live on video, on YouTube.com, I say live, not live, but in moving picture form, I'll record a big intro and then I'll notice in the video, more often than not, I've got ketchup around my face. So I should really just either look in the mirror before I start this or be more vigilant with my ketchup eating. Um, if you want to know what I've been up to, then there's vlogs on youtube.com, I think, forward slash Craig Reynolds 666, because someone took Reynold. That's where you can s- sort of keep up with what I'm up to. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to make these podcasts at least every other week, and then I'm trying to vlog in the middle of those weeks. So if you're not on patreon.com forward slash the downbeat, giving me one pound that allows the bricks to succeed, it allows me to sort of put some money into nicer cameras and that. If you're not on that and you're not going to www.thedownbe.at to buy a t-shirt and show your support that way, then it's absolutely fine to just go to YouTube and drop a sub there or a little, or a little review on uh, Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And you go, he is... Getting better at podcasting. Five, four stars. Give me five, but should be four. I'm learning, guys. I'm trying to get better at doing actual interviews. But I do talk a lot, don't I? So before we get on to this week's podcast with Alex and Charlie from Malevolent, let's get a word from our lovely sponsors. You can see them in the background. Display Display is a poster company with a difference. They make metal posters, and I mean literally metal, not Satan and shouting and not showering for days on end. Literally made of metal. Displays mount on the wall with a magnet. No holes, no drilling, no nonsense. If you're renting, the included protective leaf means you're not going to mess your walls up. Just attach the leaf to the wall, add the magnet, and then mount your display. Because disc plates are magnetic, not only does it take a second to adjust, but you can swap them out depending on your mood. Are you having some sort of manic episode? you want bright colours? Are you depressed? With display, there's an option to 3D print a frame to the side of the poster. It's not a real frame, but it is textured like a real frame. And at the sort of distance that you should be looking at a poster from, it definitely looks like a real frame. If you're looking at your posters really, really close up, you're probably up to something a bit weird. They've got official stores with bands like Gojira, Ghost, Judas Priest, Slipknot, as well as movies, games. We even made a downbeat store. All of the coolest downbeat merch designs. We got the coffee club design. We got tons on there. They got tons of other stuff. You can get 20% off any display using the code downbeat. If you buy three or more, you get 30% off. I get a little bit of kickback from that. You can support the podcast, you can support whatever I do, and your rooms can look cool AF while doing it. Oh, what a cool advert that was. It's almost professional now, isn't it? Code downbeat. I've already said it. My guests this week are Alex, the vocalist, and Charlie, the drummer of Malevolence. That means I've nearly had the whole band on. I love Malevolence. They are... uh, They're like an old school metal band, but they're new, young, exciting. Their new album, Malicious Intent, not really new anymore, but is awesome. They bring like a crowbar-y, Pantera without the white wine vibe, Lamb of God-y vibe, but with mosh parts. I caught up with them just before I saw them play with Trivium, which was awesome. Guess what? Heafy didn't want to do it. He didn't want to come. He was resting his voice. To be fair, Trivium played a two-hour set, so I can't really blame him. But I got them Lev Boys instead. It was a great little chat. What you can hear in the background there is my fucking dog, who only decides to walk around and jump about when I'm doing a podcast intro. It's Malevolence on the Downbeat Podcast. Starting off with that, all right? I did Rob Flynn. <laughs> <laughs> right now we're now we're going. That's it. We live. We're live. But I need everyone close to their microphone because that's what we got the headphones. That's close enough for you. Yeah, look, you sound really yeah. good. Oh yeah, really, crisp, very crisp, really nice and uh, Sheffield. Posture. Well, the posture. Well, let's let's try and work on that. I need to work on that myself. 
Uh, we're going. We've got an, everyone's got a drink. Everyone's done a pee. Yep, how do we? <laughs> when when did you do uh, Rob Flynn's podcast? Um, I think it was back not not long after the album came out, like right, June, July come, time. You, you can come slightly back from the microphone. Okay. <laughs> if you sound too hot in your headphones, not sexy hot, but like too loud, then you know you're a vocalist. <laughs> Bro, I'm the, I, I have such bad technique. I will cu- I cup the microphone. I will do everything to make myself louder. You ain't but. got you ain't got like. That one where they pull it away to be louder. Oh, no, I do that when I'm losing my voice. That cradle of filth one, he's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking effect. All of that. Did you do the Rob Flynn one in person or? No, it was over Zoom. Ah, Rob Campton. Fucking, uh, you know, you can come here though, Rob. <laughs> Sit here. That's why the Zoom ones, how did you find it? Um, Pretty sick, to be fair. I was pretty nervous. Like, it was probably the one I like. The only podcast I've done where I've like it's been one of my idols who's been doing the interviewing him. So like I was pretty nervous, but as soon as I started, it was kind of like just a normal chat. It's like the, conversation. The minute you like forget about the fact it's a podcast, and you just it's as long as it's people that you could sit in the pub or sit at fucking Nando's like we did last night and have a chat. That's all it is. Yeah, as long as you don't say some insane word, which for the most part I like to have people on who I know they're not going to fucking drop some random slur and I have to go, oh, okay. <laughs> Although that's where the money's at. You yeah. get someone on and they accidentally go. Oh, don't stitch us up then. Nah, <laughs> no, because I know I, I wouldn't have those people on. I, I I got sick of the like, the Zoom podcast. Yeah. You had to do it in COVID, but like, I was like, how can I do this differently? I was like, I'm going to fucking chat show. Just get people fucking in. Yeah, it, it's, yeah it's way more personal, isn't it? Like, and you, it's, I think it's a bit, bit more relaxed. A couple of drinks. Yeah. We're like, if you need a pee, we just press pause, we leave. It's not like a yeah, yeah. I love thing. It. And uh, you're not worried about a Wi-Fi connection as well? Yeah, beautiful. Uh, I should probably introduce you. This will be nearly, other than Con, I've got to have Con on, I'll nearly have had the full set. Yeah, Maybe I'll just have him on his own. You've heard the rest, now we're the best. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I've been rehearsing that in the hotel for about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, when can I drop that in? <laughs> Charlie, <laughs> Alex, you got any, uh, thanks for coming on the podcast from Malevolence. Pleasure. Have you got any uh, nicknames? Well, you know me, don't you, Sea Dog? Sea Dog, where does Sea Dog come from? I was thinking about this the other day. It came from our old guitarist of the band, uh, who we used to call Keith. I think his name was Josh. Was, <laughs> there's so many Joshes, so they've all got a different name, but he was called Keith Priest. He was one of our first guitarists, and he just walked into band practice one day and went, what's up, Sea Dog? And, and it stuck. And it stuck since then. That's I ate cool. it, to be honest. Why? It's just a bit of cringe, isn't it? But no, you that's, fucking, that's me now. You fucking love it. He always I do answer to it, so. <laughs> I mean, if you weren't from, like, Sheffield, if you were from London and you were calling yourself Sea Dog, it would be a little bit like, all right, mate, it's yeah. my top boy. I didn't call myself it anyway, so that's enough. No, oh, do you never refer to yourself as Sea Dog? I try not to. <laughs> Wait, your fucking Instagram is Sea Dog. Well, yeah, but... And your email address is big c dog one two three four no, at hotmail no <laughs> That's my eBay username. It just docks in your eBay now. <laughs> Everyone, go and have a look what he's, what he's selling. Please don't. Please do not do that. You got any nicknames? Um, what? Uh, I had one for a little bit that Con thought up. It was Alex Cardiff Laptop Taylor. Yeah, that's about as much as it gets. Yeah, because I'm from Cardiff and I used to like take my laptop on tour. And he's one. always on BBC iPlayer. <laughs> Who came up with that? Con. What is it? Alex? Alex, Alex Cardiff Laptop Taylor. That's so just fucking say what you see. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Alex, what, what do you mean from Cardiff? He's not really, he's from Rotherham. Well, no, no. I was born in Cardiff, uh, moved to Sheffield when I was like six or seven. Oh no, for a bit younger than that, fact, probably five. Did you six. have a Welsh accent and got rid of it? I did when I, yeah, when I moved to Sheffield, um, but because my mum's side are all from Sheffield, the Yorkshire twang, like, got picked up quite quickly. Your uh, dad's Welsh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Nice. No, my he does a solid Welsh accent. Go on. I'm not being funny, but I'm on the Downbeat podcast. Right? <laughs> With my fucking boyos, like. That is actually Brutality really will prevail. Yeah. <laughs> you know, do you know what? That's how we first met. Um, yeah. Probably in Wales. I, my, my parents are Scottish, and I can't do a Scot- And I fucking live in Scotland. And they don't live in Scotland. They live in Reading. I moved up here. I don't know why. Well, I mean, I know why. But, like... <laughs> Uh, 
I can't do a Scottish accent. Have a go. Surely you can by now. Come on. I literally can't. Let me let me try and think of something to say. Now I'm thinking of Welsh. I can't do it. Give me a minute. I'll just drop it halfway through the podcast. <laughs> uh, that's how we met. A seamless segue. Yeah. Whenever this happens, I like to break the podcast and go, look how good at podcasting I am. Talking about Wales, that's when I used to play in a band called Brutality Will Prevail. R.I.P. 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 When... Oh, fuck, that, was a fizzle, that was a fizzle out. <laughs> <laughs> but we, we, like, we, were, we were on the fucking way out when, we, when a, a little-known new band called Malevolence came along. It must have been 2012. We must have played 2013 or something. Yeah, yeah. at least 10 years ago. Yeah. How long's Malev been going? Uh, 12, I've, been in, I've been in 13 years this year. 19 years for me. What? First gig I played was primary school assembly. <laughs> yeah, but was it called Malevolence? Two years after it was. <laughs> no I'm, fucking way. We've got the picture as well. We played a gig uh, under the boardwalk in Sheffield with the same name. And while she sleeps, they had the same name as well. We supported them. 06. Jesus. Hang on. But going back to that school assembly, I was actually in the audience because <laughs> I was the year below him. So I mean, I was in the crowd. What song was it? You did, you did uh, White Stripes. Oh yeah, Seven Wilkie Nation on vocals. Island. Wilkie on vocals. Oh yeah. my God. Has anyone got any footage? No. Oh. We, we didn't have cameras back then, mate. <laughs> it wasn't that fucking old. <laughs> How old are you? I just turned 30 last week. Did ya? How was it? Pretty good. Are you? <laughs> I'm ready for it. Well, I lost two years to COVID, so I'm 28 really. Just you or did everyone? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Every time someone says that, I'm like, all right, we're all, we all need... Do you consider yourself 28 then? M- mentally. Mentally 18, probably. Yeah. I mean, you look fucking young for 30. Just pal, I'll take that. Yeah. I got That's that the you. other day. Yeah, some, thank you. I was waiting for that. <laughs> Big gap. Uh, someone said that the other day. Someone also, you know, we were talking in, in, in uh, Nando's yesterday. Shout out Nando's. <laughs> um, <laughs> about uh, steroids. Someone <laughs> left a comment this morning on my Instagram. was like, are you using gear? Looks like Trend. And I was like, fuck yeah, boys. Thank you very much. <laughs> that means quite a lot to me. Um, you're not having a midlife crisis. How old are you? 29. Oh, it's coming. You didn't have any like... I had it a few years ago, so I just I just pretended I was thirty a few years ago and then just took it on. Nice cosplay, no. cosplay, of 30. <laughs> <laughs> cosplay, of thirty year old. Yeah. Uh, I'm at, I had one thirty, like a little midlife crisis, and I'm thirty five and thirty six this year, and I'm having another one right. So when you got the A three, mm, S three, come on, get it right. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> uh, honestly, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm fully like, not fully midlife crisis. I haven't got the money to do a full midlife crisis. But like, just in terms of like being, I don't know. I feel old. This first year I feel old. Aches it's, and pains. It's coming. Yeah. Aches and pains and fucking more. Bro, I've had that for like four years now. Like, if, if that's a midlife crisis, then I, I've, 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 right. I started early. You'll, be, you'll, you'll have a second one. You'll either have a second one or, hang on, how old are you? 20? 29. Or you'll die at 50. 50, 58. <laughs> <laughs> hope not. I'm ambitious. But... I, I hope not. I mean, no, that's, that's a bit dark. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man, no, I live a much healthier lifestyle these days. So, Do you? Um, yeah, we might try and touch 60. <clears throat> Did anyone go to the gym today? No. I knew it. <laughs> we were, we were, last <laughs> night, we were in, in Nando's and we were just having a little chat. And everyone's like, oh, is there any good gyms around? And I was like, yeah, we'll go to them. I wasn't like, yeah, I was like, I guess so. And everyone was up for it. No one went, not a single. Nah, I, it was, a, it was a, I woke up and it was a toss up between getting a fade for podcast or going to the gym. Getting a pump. Get, get, those, get those headphones off. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let me have a look. Look at that. He's a fresh cut. It looks great. You're, you're very well lit. If you're just listening to the audio version of this, you're fucking missing out. You're missing out big on the <laughs> racing straps and everything. Fresh, I must say that the, the, the layout in here and the lighting is amazing. I feel very relaxed right now. Thank you very much, mate. Do you know what? You, you're the first episode with the bricks and with... I, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> the pandemic happened and I was like, well, you, like I'm going to have to get online, terminally online. So I got like the cameras and shit to do Twitch. Everything about like lighting, backlighting, that lighting, the cameras, all of it just YouTube. Just like I did a video and the my, the man I was filming looked unwell. What do I do? And then it comes up like how to balance skin tones. And I'm like, okay, do that, do that. And then I thought I 
I put money into the vibe. No, I, I, I feel it. It looks amazing. Do you do that with all your drumming streaming as well? Balance your skin tone out yeah. when you're on the kit. All that shit, yeah. Nice, it's nice. Fucking, it's fucking annoying. <laughs> but I, I want to get to the point. If uh, patreon.com forward slash downbeat, give me a fucking quid because it took me three hours to set this up. And sometimes, I was telling you yesterday, sometimes the people, oh, I don't want my episode to come out. Well, you've wasted six hours of my time. <laughs> the builders exposing the brick, they wasted their <laughs> fucking time. <laughs> like, it's, uh, <coughs> yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. No, man. The vibe in here is very good. Yeah, lovely and spacious. I thought it was going to be like a little cupboard. There's a cupboard there. I was just thinking <laughs> about that the other day. That's perfect, like, Harry Potter size. Like, if I were to, uh, you know, heavily... You'd just go with adopt a magical child. Adopt a magical child. Go. That's better. What I actually meant... I, I actually, the reason that's fresh in my mind... This is, this is going well. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a theory... The, it's quite a horrific theory that Harry Potter is all just a figment of this child's imagination that's just kept in a cupboard. I've, I've heard this story before. And all of the wizards and stuff is just in his brain because he's locked in the cupboard it's that he lives in. pretty dark when yeah, you think about it like really, that. Really fucking dark. Let's get less dark. How's your tour? Pretty good so far. Pretty We've grey and it. rainy. It's January in winter. And you're in Scotland. Exactly. It yeah. fucking rains all the time. I mean, yeah, weather's shite. Shows have been sick. Um, we did two shows in Dublin, one in Belfast. And normally, like... Is I, that where it started? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, normally Ireland's a bit of a hard slog for us. Because, I don't know, every time we go there, it's like we're either part of a package and we play at doors or we headline and there's... 20 people there. We've been going back for nine years now and it's been a very steady incline in <laughs> Ireland. I don't think, I think Stray's been once, I think BWP went once and uh, although I love the country, I think it was like, Tough gig. Well, that, yeah, <laughs> that wasn't financially viable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A trivia, like obviously, so it's Trivium, Heaven Shall Burn, which all due respect to Heaven Shall Burn in the UK is insane. In Europe, they're fucking absolutely huge. Yeah, but we'll smash them in the UK. They'll smash us in Germany. Fair play. Isn't they're it? so big in Germany. It's yeah. crazy. Um, Trivium, Heaven Shall Burn, Malev. There's no opener. Um, no, no, we are we are the opener. What time are you playing at? Seven uh, sharp. Seven o'clock. Yeah, and then in the on the European leg, obituary join us. Um, so we'll still be the opener. Uh, <laughs> two months on a bus with obituary oh apparently I mean they're old now but apparently they, I mean they're from fucking Florida that's gonna be a laugh surely I hope so could go either way <laughs> they're fucking I, I'm sure the Got two a lot of hair between them a so hair. much hair a for, lot of hair, for yeah. old lads take it for a skin fade <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. at least there's no like shower for them to clog up though on the bus true true I, I think I heard that they love to party still oh. I wouldn't put it past them they're fucking legends. What a good... I'd love to be in a fly in the, fly in the wall of the Malev obituary bus. <laughs> I can't even imagine. It'd be like some weird sitcom because like they're Spinal pretty old tap. and you're pretty young. Yeah, yeah. but like... It's either going to be sick or weird. But right. I, th- I think I'm, 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 I'm hoping it'll be sick. I'm sure they're, like, I'm sure they're nice guys. Um, but as long as I've got my PS4 set up on, set up on the PlayStation and uh, set up on the TV, then we're, yeah, we're fully boring these days. We yeah, used to yeah. be we used to be crazy. Wait, you don't you don't party? No, not really. We don't no, take we... that much encouragement. It just takes like a couple of nutcases to get us going and then yeah, we're off. I was gonna say, because last time I saw you, we were in Yeah Sheffield and everyone was really fucked up. And that was only about two months ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh. I've, I've sorted it out since then. Oh no, really? So like a post <laughs> post Christmas thing. Yes. Yeah, How was your Christmas? New Lovely, year? thanks. Fantastic. Yeah, I was. I was so. We, we actually got back from the US on Christmas, ten o'clock Christmas Eve, and then I went Fucking down. Hell. I went down to my family's, and then it was just a blur of jet yeah, lag. It was just. I was. We were all so jet lagged, and we were like putting messages in the group chat, like, "Is anyone else this fucked?" I fell asleep five times at Christmas Day, and like, yeah, was miserable. And where got, did you fly from in the states? LAX. Oh, so you was that's the worst jet lag. Yeah, LA to home is you had it. fucked. Yeah, it's, why? Because it's just it's like it's almost a waking day's worth of hours. So it's like it eight, eight hours. Off. So it throws you perfectly off. Mm-hmm. 
I found that like even Australia or Japan or something like that, I can get back to it easier because it's so mental. Yeah. Like maybe not going. Oh, I know, I know what it is. When you're going that way, what's west. That? East. East. Yeah. <laughs> Completely <That one>. wrong. <laughs> I still have to go never eat shredded wheat. <laughs> yeah, I, st- I still do that and all. <laughs> to get... Do you know that? What? Never eat shredded never wheat. Never eat shredded wheat. Oh. <laughs> I still have to do it. 35, 36 this year. No uh, something every day? If you go east... <laughs> yeah, it is east. Yeah. yeah. If you go east, the jet lag's worse. So, like, getting to Japan is pretty shit, but coming back's... Not too bad. This is a fucking boring conversation. <laughs> uh, is that your first time in America? No, second, second time. So the first time we went over was in 2016 with uh, Kublai Khan and Jesus Peace, who are now a lot Heavy bigger. Tour. So I wish oh, we... I saw you on that tour. Did you? Did you? Yeah, we played uh, a fest together. On that tour? Stray, Stray, yeah, Stray played it. What fest? Malev was there. It was, a f- I'll fucking find it right now. And then we were the, we were the odd band out. I don't remember us playing a fest on that tour. Uh, oh, uh, uh, all day, uh, oh, okay, fucking right. thing. I don't mean a fest, a <laughs> festival. Yeah, yeah, fair. I don't uh, think we did any fest. We were playing like grilled cheese sandwich shops. I'm gonna find it. <laughs> Skate parks. How do I spell your fucking band name? Um, male violence with no I. Nice, and it is male violence, right? Jesus, peace. Who else was on it? Kublai Khan. Oh, maybe not then. Is it just me with my voice really deep on this microphone? Yeah, it sounds sexy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is just picking up the real sound. What are these microphones? Rode. They are. They're Rode, Rode. pod mics, and they're really great and low cost. And that's a Rodecaster 2, and that's really great. And it is actually really great. I want... I like how I led you into your Thank own you. Thank you for that. I'll, I'll help you out. It's getting to the point where they're going to have to give me some money. Uh, <laughs> they don't. They give me so much cool shit. Uh, I can't find it, but... It's because it doesn't exist. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I played an all-dayer with every band that you just mentioned there in 2016, and I remember it being the worst fucking show ever. <laughs> um, just because, and this will be a, a seamless segue, but I do want to talk about America more in a minute. How do you find, because you are currently in the transition from cool hardcore band to metal band to Grebo metal band <laughs> to Grebo metal band and we all know and it's not why you're doing it but there's far more money in, in the Grebo metal band section do people old fans fucking hate it when Con Very gets few. the old pipes out there's only a handful of old beatdown kids that said the new album's whack but yeah you get away with it you're getting away with it yeah and like we, we opened it up to so many new fans it's a lot more accessible now, all this singy songy stuff. So when you do touring with singy songy stuff, but I mean, you've always <laughs> had singy songy stuff. Yeah, like if you've been following my levels for a while, you like, I think you'll you can't get upset when you see the progression because I think it's quite a natural evolution of our sound. Like you, if if you're actually listening to what the music we've put out since the first album, you'd be like, oh, actually, yeah, this was always the way they were going to go. Yeah, because like for. So self supremacy. Rain of suffering was first. Rain of suffering was first. Yeah, yeah. Self supremacy was the was the one where it was like, okay, well, this is now in the sound, mm. and that was still pretty early. When was that? Because you fucked off for ages, just doing EPs and shit. You fucking <laughs> idiots. Ten year anniversary in November this year. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> yeah, mad isn't it? That is mental. Uh, but like, have you? Is it a conscious choice? To not do hardcore tours, or are you still doing hardcore tours? We're just trying to straddle both, to be honest. Just do hate breed, two metal for hardcore and two hardcore for metal. Yeah, and did work well for them. <laughs> and they're fucking sick. Yeah, yeah I mean, we'll, I think if the right tour comes about, it, regardless of whether it's metal or it's a hardcore band, you know, we'll, we'll always consider it. It's just, we just want to do everything which we think is cool and maybe try to chuck in a few like tours that aren't what people necessarily think we're going to do because obviously we want to play to new people. Um, what was the States tour that you just did? Because you had one and it cancelled. Uh, yeah, so we had one that we cancelled and then the the one that we've just done was Ginger, POD and Space of Variations. And that was sick. It was like, it was way better than we thought it was going to be. So the Acacia Strain tour didn't happen? Yeah. 
who else was on the Acacia Strain tour? Uh, it was I Am, who were uh, yeah. te- from Texas, uh, sick band. We actually we ended up touring um, with Thy Art Is Murder and I Am in Australia. God, like a fucking sick tour. Yeah, that, that was, was like, that was like a few months ago. When was that? September. September. Yeah. So like not even that, that long ago. Um, Fuck, you've been on it. So you went from that straight to America. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, more or less. Yeah. Pretty much. A few months in between, but that September tour was like the most intense tour we've ever done ever. Because there was there was no bedtimes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever <laughs> done you mean, that? What do you mean no bed? Oh wait, in, in Australia. Australia. Yeah. Oh, uh, I've done it in Southeast Asia. Yeah. yeah. Where you just because it was Australia flying. Yeah. So fly, we, so fly, we, fly. We got we. we, we get home from the first show we'll get back to the hotel at like sorry <laughs> sorry right. get back to the hotel at um 1 a.m wake up at 4 a.m go straight to the airport arrive in the next city at like midday try and check into the hotel get told, check in get told to fuck off come back at four o'clock so we'd, there'd be like 20 moshers all just asleep on the floor of this hotel reception and there'd be people trying to chase us out then we'd eventually <laughs> maybe get an hour's sleep and then go to the venue play the show you know, when you wake up at three in the morning for a flight or something, it was like that in the afternoon before the gig every day. Yeah. Two hours in the night, two hours in the day. I'm surprised that that happened in, in Australia. Like, what were Thy Art doing? You know, it was criminal mastermind Andy Marsh from Thy Art is Murder. <laughs> he was just trying to rack up his Avios points, <laughs> getting all those, getting these horrible but flights. Were they doing the same thing? Um, yeah. No, I think they had like slightly better ones. No, they, they they were doing, for the most part, they were doing the same thing. So like, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, fuck that. Like, because I've had that in Southeast Asia when the people booking it just don't care. So they just go, I mean, they care, but they're just like, okay, well, get them in, get them out, forgetting the logistics. But Australia, every time I've done Australia on a flyer, there's usually some buffer time. But yeah, fuck that. I remember the Southeast Asia tour we did exactly what you what you're saying. Show except worse actually because Southeast Asia's got a touch of the fucking Italy about it. It's like, oh, when are we on? Uh, it's supposed to be eleven, but actually you're on at two a.m. <laughs> then your flight's at six a.m. Yeah, someone's late. Whatever, no sleep. And I remember there being a time, and this is when my brain just broke. And I don't think it's ever been the same. <laughs> it was like five days in of no sleeping, mm-hmm. or just like sleeping in airports. And the, the plane hit turbulence, and I was like, "Yes, I'm going to die." <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and ever since that moment forward, my brain has never been the same. Fucking sleep deprivation. How do you play? Sleep deprived. Oh, just sloppy, <laughs> stressed. A lot, of, a lot of tantrums in it. Oh yeah. Who's who's the worst tantrums? Probably me. Is it? Yeah, bad temper. Second worst, you. Probably um, you. Second, I'd say. I think we can all be bad. Pe- Come on, it throw some out, people under the bus. It comes who's out in other ways. People just grumble through it. Yeah, yeah. Which is so worse, like, I think. So like, you'll you'll have you're like you're you're five minutes of just like punching the shit out of the snare drum. Will Keel just turn really sassy. <laughs> Josh is like, <laughs> turns he into gets a really bit, sarcastic. Yeah, sarcastic and turns into an alcoholic. <laughs> Con just sits on his Game Boy. Like, is Con the, the most chill? No. Yeah, because no, I was going to say he, he looks he, like he's a stress head. And then I, yeah, I, I'm, I can be pretty mardy as well. But normally I'll just like try and take myself away before I get to that. But yeah, I can turn into a bit of a diva and all. When I, I'm fucking the worst, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, and it's me and Drew. We're the fucking worst. But I remember. I'm on the BWP, <laughs> you're a bit of a diva then. Oh, go on. I'm, I'm, no, I just remember thinking he's a bit of a fucking diva. Is it? <laughs> Even back then, yeah, yeah, before yeah. I was fucking spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me, go on, what did I do? No, no, honestly, I can't give you an exact example. I just, well, you re- fucking remember. I, no, do you know what it was, right? It was the London show. Where did we play on that London, that BWP tour? Yeah, I just wanted it to go home. home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the last show, and I think everyone had kind of like had enough. And I think I, I just remember talking to you, and then I come. I don't. I don't remember the conversation. I just remember walking around like fucking hell. He's so, sassy. He's a bit f- fucked up with him. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's de- it definitely happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not even any better. If anything, I'm worse. I'm like, but that that is a bit. I'm probably better at um, not letting a fucking support man see. Do you know what that, that would have been as well? Like that, that was the last tour of the BWP. Taking so. it out on the support. <laughs> 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 nah, it would have been, I probably moaned at you. Probably. 
It, like, it wasn't anything bad. Like, you didn't I mean, upset me. It sounds pretty bad. You didn't it. upset me. my day. You didn't upset me. I was, I was all right. But yeah, I just remember walking away and be like, fuck. Jeez. <laughs> Oh, I fucking wish we could find out what it was. Yeah, I haven't changed at all. If anything, I'm definitely worse. But I, I'm better at like, I'm just, fucking, by that point, I've been touring for 10 years. Now I've been touring for 20 years. So it just gets, and like BWP at that point, respectfully, was a sinking ship 10 years ago. So like we did that tour and you, I think you smashed, well, you like smashed us on that tour. Yeah. So it was like, I was like, in my head, checked out while I went home and left the band. Yeah. <laughs> so you actually caught me on the on probably the, the day that I decided to leave the <laughs> yeah. band. No, yeah, there's no, there's, I don't, there's no hard feelings. And I think if I've been touring, I mean, I'm miserable after 12 years of touring. So like, yeah, another 10 years. Unless it's like 2,000 people bouncing, he's, he's grumpy these days. Yeah, I'll just sit, Spoiled. Back, st- big st- sit backstage and play Call of Duty. Yeah. <laughs> that's that, but that's the coming back to like what you were saying about partying. Like, we, I, we, we kind of, all chilled out a lot compared to what we were like five, six years ago. We've we're quiet, you know, we've done a bit of growing up. And um Over COVID, it's, not, I guess. it's not consistent. Like like how we were touring back in like twenty fourteen, twenty fifteen. So it's I'll, unsustainable. Yeah, I I I I look look back at that now and I'm like, oh my God, like I can't do that again. The like, thought of it makes me anxious. Yeah. See yeah. I have gone I uh, never say never because I've gone full circle now because I've oh, realised yeah. if I if I do a tour sober, this is obviously terrible advice, don't take my advice. If I do a tour sober, I fucking hate it even more <laughs> than I already hate it. It does take the edge off. Oh, give you that. It's so good. Like if something goes wrong and you just go and have a couple of pints, it's like, <laughs> oh, you know what? doesn't matter. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, but once you adopt that attitude when you don't need the beer, which is kind of where I'm at now, it's like if something goes wrong, it doesn't matter. Well, but, how did you do that though? Come on, teach me. Uh, yoga. <laughs> is it actually? I oh, like you never do it. Is it actually? I, I try. No, honestly, just like, talk. Trying and try and take a bit of a step back and see the like. Honestly, trying to see the bigger picture. Like anything with like regards to the tour on now, with like when it comes to like travel and logistics and stuff. Trying to just see the bigger picture and be like, actually, in the end, it will be fine. Not getting hung up over like where the drum kit's going to be on the fucking stage or like how many cabs we can fit on, and just be like, listen, it is what it is. Just like because like before. For example, on it's the... easy to say that as a it... singer, though, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is what it is, guys. Let me just load in my microphone. <laughs> it's true. true, true. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And I, I, I'm aware I've got an easy ride. But like on the ginger tour, we just did. There were a lot of nights where we had to have Charlie off to the side, which I think, as a, if I'm standing watching a show and the drummer's on the right, I think that looks wank. It feels it, weird. It feels weird it, on it, stage. It feels weird on stage. The whole vibe's off. But you know. You, the shows were still sick when you like life goes on. So fucking zen over here. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Oh, he's a diva. I'm fucking zen. Well, Mate, we've fallen out. I've got like 30 boxes to bring in. I've got five toms, six um, toms, all of that. Are you not fucking sick of it? That's what it yeah, is. I, the, <laughs> there it is. That's what it is. Like, because you've been doing it for fucking ages as well. It gets to a point. Where, like, say you've got a meter, I've got a meter of a hundred, and it's a hundred fucks that I give. And it's, it every time I have to load in 11 fucking drums or whatever and set my shit up, and oh, I stubbed my fucking thumb while I was doing a cymbal felt, it just goes boom, 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 boom. And now I'm here to the point where I'll pay for it. I talk about it all the time on the podcast, but yeah. I'll pay for a drum tech out of my own money. When I'm just doing my cymbals daily, I'm like, oh my God, imagine if I had a drum tech. It's I'm just best. thinking, I will get one myself. I'll pay for it myself. That's what I do. And it is, it, mentally, it's worth it because then you can adopt the singer. Yeah, imagine. Oh, chill, guys. <laughs> chill. We just come back oh, from BBC the BBC Eye. Come back from the gym. <laughs> <laughs> what is the BBC Eye player shit? It's just always on it. You watched like a full series of Shameless on um, the last tour. <laughs> why uh, why do you get roasted for that? Though? Like, why is laptop Well, it's the rest thing? of us have got ADHD and we're running around talking to every single person in the venue and then he's just sat there focused on the iPad for the whole night. And I just don't know how he does it. So we're like, oh, fucking BBC Eye over here. Yeah, these guys have... BBC Eye, so that's the nickname. <laughs> I, I don't have to... <laughs> Funny thing is, it's never iPlayer, it's, it's Netflix, so I don't know where It's fucking play. so much funnier to call it iPlayer, though, that's why. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking this when we went to Nando's last night, then I came home, and I, I, I think I made a tweet about it, but I was like, I, it's hard to think of another band that every member is funny, like, in their own way. 
like at the Malev. It's like, and in my head, I was like, it's like the fucking Spice Girls. <laughs> like every one of you is completely different. Spice Boys. But sp- <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that'll do it. But like every one of you is completely different, but in your own way. So like, you could have like a favorite. I think Malev needs more. I'll get I'll get every single member on the podcast, and people can decide. What What was your tweet, by the way? Um, you know how like what did you what did you put? K-pop people have that they call it a bias. Oh and yeah, it's who's like, your Malev bias? And it's like who's who's your BTS bias or whatever? And it's which one's your favorite? I've got a uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, who, a lot Con. of people saying Con, Charlie, Con, Josh, Josh. Ben Stan. <laughs> I think a lot of people a lot of people didn't didn't uh, understand the joke. Absolutely no one says Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, guys. Absolutely no one. Um but yeah. Where the fuck what were we talking about before that? Can't remember. Boozing or something. Professional. <laughs> oh yeah, drum drum tech stuff. Um oh, I just I think everyone would be a lot more everyone would be comfortable if we could all just have crew. That's that's the goal, isn't it? Enough crew. But people dream. would think Malev have got a massive crew and you're making loads of fucking money. No. We, I mean, we, we just started we, getting crew. Yeah, crew is quite a new thing for us. So like we, we have um like our own sound engineer that we just kind of started working with recently and he's he's amazing and now he's, the the little boy. Youth team signing. <laughs> young, young boy malevolated on Instagram. We made him change his uh Instagram. The young boy malevolated. Uh, it was O one two one Tom malevolated. And then he's, it's been updated since, I think. Yeah, his, his bio is like, uh, best sound guy on the package. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. He's 21. 21. 21, mate. Can yeah. you imagine? Is he smashing it? He's killing it. What were you like at 21? It's fucking diva, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, more, more of the same. I don't know why I'm such a prick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I try so hard to not be. You've really, that's going to be a complex now. I hope I've changed. <laughs> I haven't. No, no, no you sound, mate. Don't I've worry, changed don't, to other people. Listen, we'll, this was 10 years ago. Don't worry about it. I were a bit of a prick 10 years ago and all, so, you know, mm. it's all good. I didn't think you were a prick at the time. Yeah, but who else have I left that lasting who impression fuck, on? Who fucking cares? Look, you're on your own podcast now. You're doing yeah, bits out here. You've got fuck, a lovely gaff. Fuck Go on, you. Come on. Whoever, whoever did that. Yeah, chat shit. Get banged. <laughs> I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> Fuck yeah, let's go. Jamie Vardy. Um, is anyone like mad into sports out of you lot? Um, not really. I Pretend like, to be. Yeah, m- me and Charlie. That's our football. aesthetic, but we actually <laughs> aren't. Yeah, we'll, we'll print football shirts all day long, but no, me and Charlie, like, I watch a bit of football, Charlie watches a bit of football, none of the other lads give a shit. World Cup. When World Cup's on, we'll all like, go to the pub and watch a game. Yeah, I'm, sh- I'm Sheffield from Wednesday. the UK, isn't it? Sheffield Wednesday through and through, but... Yeah, they just kick the ball out of the pitch all the time. So <laughs> I lost a bit of interest, but yeah, if anyone asks, yeah, Wednesday. <laughs> I lost so much interest during COVID. I lo- I fell out of love with loads of shit during COVID. The like the f- when they had football on without the crowd, oh, I was oh. like, it just remind. It was like someone poking me in the head, going, "Remember, there's a pandemic. Remember, you might not be able to go back to work ever." Yeah, yeah, and then it was always out of sync as well, which really yeah. pisses me off. Like, and it's like the same with them. It's, anytime you see a live visit live video and there's like the slight slight audio sync yeah. oh, trust me I, I've been doing that shit all fucking day <laughs> working on fucking audio syncs um, let's talk about your US tour let's talk about this latest US tour because the first one sounds like it was pretty DIY oh, yeah. Ginger POD yeah so in my head does Adam manage you yes yeah. Adam Foster shout out Adam Foster love him yeah. big ups I've never heard him called Adam he's only ever been Foster Foster, Foster yeah oh, I, he when used he, to drive for Ashby and he's got some fucking, yeah he's got some fucking stories about me because he on. he came up like driving by Ashby but right. I, in fact and so Here you tell me I'm a fucking diva ask Adam Foster what I was like when I was in Ratchfi you got oh. any more Foster stories I'm intrigued I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fucking release them <laughs> Foster came on the podcast and it didn't come out oh really yeah. is, he one of the, is, he, is he one of these ones that's like oh no we can't, we can't it was a that. really early days in the podcast uh. and in his defence he came on the podcast and fucking unloaded about loads of shit and I was like during the podcast I was like are you sure you're allowed to say this and he was like Probably. uh yeah and then afterwards he <laughs> was like Probably shouldn't. <laughs> but it wasn't like bad shit. It was like shit that needed to be said about the industry. Um, but I'd if love I, to hear that. Is he pushing you? He's. I don't own the file. I think he bought the file off me. 
I mean, because he was like, I want to release this one day, but when the time's yeah, right. right, you know what he's like. Clock Fucking <laughs> checkers, not uh, chess, not checkers. Yeah. <laughs> is he. Because a man fucking knows the music business. Is he helping with the choice of tours or do you just get the tours and then you guys pick or what? Because Ginger POD is the sort of thing on the outside, I would assume. Looks like a management move. Well, Malev would say no to, but I don't know if that's if that's the case. It's actually been a bit slim pickings out in the USA because obviously we've not had an offer since 2016 when we did that Kublai like Khan one until we had a cases train and then when that fell through. Uh, luckily, we're just friends of Ginger. Um, we've just had a few piss ups with them throughout Europe and stuff. And um, yeah, they gave us the offer, and we that was the only thing we had going. But also, it was an amazing opportunity. So yeah, we gladly took it. And, Band's uh, fucking massive. They're, yeah, they're so, so big. big. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. yeah. They, 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 and it surprised me to be fair, like how big they actually were. Like, because I've, I've heard the name. I, I granted, I, the only time I've really heard of the band is when we were on the bus drinking vodka with them outside Manchester Academy, like a few years ago. And then I've heard the name dotted about since. Never listened to the music, and then until the tour. So did you did. not listen to the music? I mean, you can not answer this if you want to stay diplomatic, but I'll fucking answer it. I never checked them out because of the name. I don't I like then it's the same ginger carnival who else but someone's like oh, you got to check this band out everyone's telling me you got to check ginger out I was like ginger <laughs> <laughs> I'll be listening to obituary thank you <laughs> and then I checked it out and I was like it's fucking heavy you like, know what it's, you know what it's about ginger it's the guitar noise because it's like gentian isn't it ginger. is that what it is apparently no way I didn't know did you not know that yeah Josh told me well, now Makes I, more sense now. now right? oh, yeah, now I hate it even more. But, <laughs> <laughs> but the band's actually fucking good. Yeah, that, they do shred. That tour must have been fucking... Yeah, I was buzzing off POD. The crowd didn't seem to be as much as I'd hoped. But it's because it's 2022 at this point. Uh, but they have, they have fucking... It's fine, I'm saying it, you're not saying it. Uh, POD's <laughs> got bangers. POD yeah. are really oh, yeah. fucking good live. Yeah, they, so fun. they were uh, like, it was... They've like been a band that we've all grown up listening to, like Boom and that. What was that? What was the Satellite and stuff? South like Town. That. That, that was the album, wasn't it? Satellite. Yeah, we based on the Unbroken Glass video on the South Town video, and we never actually told them that on the tour. I wanted to make a point of telling them. Oh, I, don't think, I don't think they give a fuck, to be honest. No, they didn't, didn't give a fuck about <laughs> anything. Did, did you not get on with them? They were cool dudes. <laughs> uh, Marcus, the guitarist, was sick. He's like a house DJ as well. He was a man after my own heart. Yeah, um, and then it's. Was Alex from Suicide uh, Lopez from Suicide yeah, yeah, Silence? Yeah, he was on drums. Playing drums, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a top lad. He's a great drummer. He spent more time in he, our dressing room than he, he likes, <laughs> to, be he likes to party. Yeah. yeah oh, no, he was straight edge yeah. on that one. Oh, he, he, yeah, maybe he, he partied too far because I've partied with that lad a couple of times. Yeah, he's a, he's a new, I think he's reformed, reformed party head. <sighs> Jealous. <laughs> If only I could get through tour without it. <laughs> I can't. I literally can't. Go. I feel I've you. thought about it on this Beartooth tour coming up, which you've got a fucking couple of festivals that we play at the same time. Uh, what's it called? What's the festival? I can't remember. Welcome you, to Rockville. Sonic Rockville. Something. We're, all, we're all on that. All the boys on that. But we've got this Beartooth tour coming up before that. Uh, and then, and I'm like, could I do it sober? And then I see that we're not on a bus. We're in a van again. And I'm like, back on the sauce. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> but part of me wants to experiment with it. Maybe like first week, do the first week sober and be like, well, can I do this? Because do you I'm, smash do you smash gym when you're on tour though? Every day. Well, every that's day. a reason not to booze, isn't it? And, uh, but gains. You just, no, but you know what? Because of playing the set and going in the gym, sometimes the easiest way to get calories in is like pints. Because <laughs> yeah, otherwise, so. I'll be like. You must know what it's like. If you, if you haven't had enough calories in the day, you to a lesser extent, but like drumming, if you haven't got enough calories in the day, I play like shit. If I do two days in a row, I don't know if maybe you're naturally fucking gifted, but if I have two days in a row where I'm definitely eating under my calories, performance suffers so bad. I've never really checked, to be honest. But yeah, I don't drink before. You, but you said this yesterday. I said, do you drink before you play? And you went, no. If a couple of points. <laughs> well, that is the that is the definition of drinking. <laughs> you, I mean, you, yeah, you definitely do sometimes. If it's a social viber and all your mates are there, then two's the limit, really. Any more than that, it just goes seriously downhill very quickly. But well, you don't do it for like, because like, I do it because it makes. Like, I don't get drunk. 
I like I'll have a couple before I play. That's a point. No, I'm not doing a sober tour because I have a couple before I play, and it just a it loosens me up a little bit playing wise. And then B, obviously I'm not advocating drinking alcohol. I've said fucking way worse on this podcast. <laughs> um, but and B, it makes me more, you know, like those drummers who are a bit lame and they fucking do loads of show pony shit. You're a stick spinner. But like, sh- like show pony shit. Like Call I me can't, a show pony. No, nah, uh, a little bit, but like in a good way. Do you not stand up? But I can't. I stand up, but I, I can only do it if I've had a couple of points. Otherwise, yeah, while do I'm doing like... while I'm doing it, I'm like, "Fuck is this guy, diva?" <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm, I'm fully I'm, as a as a vocalist. I'm fully into it. When I turn around and I'm seeing you stood on your drum, stood on your drum. That's just ADHD. Giving it all of this. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking loving See, it. See, I can't, I can't do that sober. <laughs> I don't have the confidence to do that sober because part of my brain just goes, who the fuck do I think I am? Oh, but no, then I you. have a couple and I'm like, I'll tell you who I fucking yeah. am. <laughs> <laughs> Stomping around the place. <laughs> what was your, uh, what's your favourite, <laughs> give me your favourite US city to play? Go on, you go first. LA. It blows my mind. Reason? Uh, Star studded dressing room. Nah, I didn't really care about that. Just the weather, to be honest. It's 25 the degrees. Who was it? Yeah, right, yeah, that's a good, valid answer. But the show, whenever we play in LA, it uh, used to be the show was shit, but now it's good. Yeah. I just thought it was a cool place, to be honest. Like lots of stuff going on. A little bit different to the rest of it. What was that? I mean, I, like, I love LA, but the shows are usually not that great for us. What was the star studded um, dressing big, room? Big Boy Jose Mangan turned up. Oh, yeah. Uh, did an interview with the boys for Sirius XM, which I missed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. I was off sending the drum kit back. Shout but, out to Jose, though, because yeah. he, like, he came through, and, and because of him, our band, or like so many people on the, across that tour came up to us and were like, yo, I discovered you because of Jose. Yeah, I um, want that. I want that as a, a little retirement plan. Just give me, give me a fucking radio show. <laughs> I love music. I just hate being places. <laughs> just let me do it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Who else came through? Um, Art Cruz, Lamb of God Lad, he was in. Oh, yeah. We were just taking piss out of him for being in Windsor Plague. <laughs> he was in Windsor Plague. <laughs> love yeah. that. He was in Windsor Plague. Great drummer. Um, Devil Driver. Des from Devil Driver come through. Um, Des from Sepultura. Sepultura singer. He's called Derek, isn't he? That's Derek. Oh, yeah. I think you're... Oh, Des. Uh, I'm it's that you just calling them... Do you do, you do that? Just give people nicknames. Oh, Des. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Des. That's like a, a, a staple malevolence in joke. Nobody gets called their real name. Yeah. Do the people not it. do that? Oh, no, I do it as well, though, so I quite like that. It's, it's, probably it's always thing. add big as well. Always add big to the beginning. <laughs> like, especially if the person is small. <laughs> Do you, have you you've heard you've heard of what we call Josh? Your Josh, yeah, yeah. We John ne- Baines. It, we'd never called him Josh in his life. He's always John Baines, John the bastard, John the bitch. John, right? So, what, <laughs> so you had a different Josh, which you called Keith. Yeah, I've got a Josh because you had Jed. too many Joshes. But then this Josh is called John, and then this other you got another Josh. Yeah, shout out Jed Furness back in S ten. You call him Jed. So is anyone Jed just Josh? <laughs> Rarely. <laughs> no. I don't know any. I can't think of her. Did you get, when you did that, so the last time we saw each other, other than uh, Chef, Stray Tour, was the Architects Tour. Yeah. Uh, did you give anyone nicknames? Did you hang out with anyone? Hey, it was straight business on that tour. Yeah. Was I barely it? saw anybody, apart from uh, Neil from In Between Us. Sleep, <laughs> sleep talking kid. <laughs> Neil and the backup dancers. <laughs> Nah, uh, big up them. They, was, they were great. Yeah, they were really yeah. lovely people. I've it's, got nothing bad to say about them, honestly. I mean, you said he looked like Neil from the Between Us. <laughs> I mean, he did. I told him to his face still. How did he feel about that? Just cracked on. Do you know what I find funny is yeah. the, all of the, um, all of the like Reddit or whatever, like there's still theories about like, oh, I think it's this person or whatever. And it's like you meet him and he's like, no, it's none of those people. Did you know he was on a Malevolence album? Who? The singer. No. Right. So I I didn't know this either until like 
Uh, yeah, the the um, re-release that we did of Higher Place, the acoustic version, which yeah. is now on Spotify. Please go stream it because it's gone fuck all streams. And, um, yeah, he did uh, some keys on it. Really, he did a bit of keys. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't. That's know. news to me. Yeah, yeah, he did it. So sh- shouts uh, out, shouts out, Neil. Big ups. His name is not really Neil. I believe his name is Vessel, and that's definitely not his name either. Couldn't tell you. Uh, I, not, it was safe. Not, but I, I, I would if I could, but I actually can't. I'll tell you this: name. but they had. Um, I watched their sound check, and he's one of the few. Sing- I mean, it's not my thing, singing wise, but like he's doing it. It's not like fucking backing tracks. Yeah, no, he, he's, he's a he's a sick vocalist. Prop, it's not my, my not my kind of music at all. But I've I've got. A, Give him his props. He's a he's a sick vocalist. Apparently, he's got another whole album or two written already, just ready to drop. Yeah, he's doing a grime EP. Imagine that. Is that real? No, no. <laughs> I still don't get you. I like it. I like that. I don't get it because I don't know. Because that new <laughs> Sleep Token song has a fucking funk section at the end. <laughs> Imagine if he did though. It, it came literally out of the goes grime project. Boom! Bang, halfway through, like a fucking slap bass. It's fucking mental. It's like comes out with a like a, a really hard rap. EP. If he's I, anything like Drake, then why not? <laughs> he just does what he wants. I'd fully back it. I'd fully back it. With the mask or not? That's the only thing I'm like. With the funk section, you look at the, the masks and you're like, oh, this might be evil. And then it's going boom, boom, with like X Factor audition vocals, which is fine. It's very good. Uh, everyone, oh, oh, you don't like them. <laughs> They're fine. They're fine. I'm allowed an opinion. This is my opinion piece. Oh, he's a diva. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck all of you. Um, you got anything to plug? Because it's late late in the day for the album. MLVLTD.com. Go pick something up. That's our Demer- livelihood Demer- out there. Empire. See, that's it. Just going back to that. How, right, in my head, how, do you, how long do you think you should be promoting an album for? Because how, how long has our album out been? Five now? years. <laughs> <laughs> that's our usual. No, but I mean... Yeah, like, I know. Fuck me. For me, right... One thing that is like apparent at the minute is like bands drop an album within like three, four months, it kind of just fizzles out. And we're guilty of this on this last album because I feel like, I still feel like the sh- the, you should be pushing it for like a year at least. What, a In year some, from release or a year from first single? A year from release. Because like, think of how much work goes into a fucking album. And like, too much. Yeah, too much. It's a fucking ball egg. Do you know how long I stand in that fucking vocal booth sweating my tits off? Press campaign's like, about six months, though, isn't it? Yeah, you got your press campaign, but in, like, then in, you terms tore of, it. If you, in terms of your socials, in some way or other, I think that you need to be pushing that album. Because I still feel like we're still in our album cycle. Like like you said, we are late in the day, but I still feel like we're, we're, we've not like reached the full peak off that album yet. We've, we've not played half of it yet because we've only had half our sets doing all these support tours. Like, we're building up to a big headline the next year. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and it's like, until you re- you get that chance to play all of those songs on the album, it's like, I don't feel like we've kind of achieved that, that full level of, right, we've, we've, we've pushed that album now. Rinsed it. There's a, like a new thing happening. Let me know what your thoughts on this are because there's like... And I'm seeing it happen. I'm seeing it fucking work. But at the same time, it's it's completely different from anything I've ever done or anything like. And they're not even old people, but like the managers have done until recently. It's like bands having six singles, like, and it's just single after single after single, and it fucking works. That's Spirit, what rappers do. Spirit Box, Lorna Shaw, yeah. like Bad Omens, a billion fucking singles. And then they're the biggest fucking band on the planet. That's that's literally how I want to take it. I, I reckon it's gonna be the way because you know, it's like you put you think about how much work you put into an album, and half the tracks on it get fucking skipped all the time, unless it's a sick one like Malicious Intent, which is you know rare. But <laughs> but <laughs> but wait, you made that a single though, Malicious Intent. Yeah. No, that's um, album track title. Album track title. Yeah, but. Like, so what, was, what was the second single? Um, first one was On Broken Glass. Second one was Life Sentence. That's what I'm thinking of. Um, do you find, like, you'll put, you'll make a, a reel or something, or like a clip or whatever, and you'll use one of the later tracks on the album that wasn't a single, and everyone's like, oh my God, is this new music? It's like, no, just fucking listen yeah, to the yeah. album. 
get yeah. to the end of it. That's it. And it's because, like, I feel like the, the market that we're, like, we're living in with music is, like, that fast fast consumerism. Everyone wants their, like... TikTok fucking... TikTok, yeah, TikTok attention span. Like, it's, like, a real thing. So, like, I'm fully on it for just doing singles in the future. And, like, or, like, maybe just, like, a, sh- a smaller collaboration. And then when the time's right, if there's a time right, doing a, an album because it's... I've, I've, I, I prefer writing in that style. Like, you know, if we're all together writing, I prefer writing for, like one or two tracks rather than like fucking and we've got eight or nine songs we need to write because it's i don't feel like you reach your full like potential if you you know you you've got that that journey ahead of you 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 like you see it as more of like a struggle rather than something fun and you might not be in you might have them a game four or five tracks exactly and then it's like well we need three more it's like well that'll do put it on there fucking front load the album bish bash bosh that's basically how we did it we had like five bangers down and we're like shit we need five more yeah. And then, like, it, it felt like the quality was just trickling away, trying to shit these five more out. But then they all came together. <laughs> trying to shit them out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but they couldn't. They, all right. Now, what was, what's the shit? Is I'm like, no. Do or die. I do hate or, that tune. Yeah, do or die. But um, um, What track is it? It's like track seven or eight or something. But yeah, seven, there was talk track of, seven or eight is where you put the fucking toilet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there was talk of, like, the last track being a single. So, like, I, I'm confident in saying that, like, it's an album full of bangers. Yeah, like I'm by this. By when I say it's the shittiest song, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily a bad song. I just don't think it matches the same quality of the other songs on the album, which is fine. Like it's you know like with, like everyone has them. And it's got a lot of your like malicious intent's got a lot of up and down though. Not in terms of quality of songs, but you've got, you've got no no you've got <laughs> <laughs> fucking diva. No, you've you've got like there's a lot of chill in there. There's yeah. a lot of like crowbarry fucking like Pantera like you know Con getting his fucking pipes out. A lot of dynamics, yeah. yeah I just wanted to showcase to like all aspects really. Try I noticed that with your set list where when you did the architects thing, there was some you know you didn't go all out just fucking heavy. Yeah, it lets the pitters have a rest and then we pick it back up for the end bit and get them bouncing again. It seems to work. Respect for doing that. Would yeah, that safe? I don't. I don't think I want. I ever want to do like a a fully soft set. Like Josh and Con have done their acoustic stuff, but that's the alter ego. And I, I, I need to feel like I need to feel that energy, and I need to see people going fucking nuts. Like if I don't see that, then it's like I find it really hard to. Yeah, like, you don't get the feedback. F- yeah, and I, I know that's like the cliche thing. It's like you, you feed off the energy of the crowd, but you literally do. Like, and if you do especially, yeah, like I, I, I get like. If I don't see people, like, they don't have to be moshing. Even just stood there, like, smiling, having a good time. If I can see they're having a good time, then sound. But if you're playing to a room full of people with their arms crossed or on their phones, don't give a shit, then it's, like, it's brutal. Like, for me, it's the (laughs) same experience every time, pretty much, because I'm just, like, looking at this snare drum. (laughs) Just trying to get through it without fucking up. And then for him, like, if he gets a load of, like, frowning people, he, he, he gets face on. Yeah, but I couldn't fucking do it. Especially, like, what you're saying, in one of the, like, slow chiller moments or songs like how do you know if they're enjoying it because yeah. there a lot of times it's just this mate it was like that in america like we walk on and it was blatant that nobody had ever heard of us and they were all stood there with arms folded looking pretty cross and we're like who are these more pits and then <laughs> and then like by song three we'd have them spinning with a circle pit in the middle of self-supremacy yeah do you and ever then, change the set yeah. i mean so it, like it, it, you play three shows and then you go well, that's not fucking working. Flip it up. No, really? Yeah. Re- normally, we're pretty. We have like. Oh, a you're pen. perfect. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, like we're, stubborn. No, no, it is, it is, we're not perfect at all. But I mean, like, we'll sit when we're driving somewhere. Like, for example, tonight we've got a 35 minute set rather than a 30 minute set. So, like, we'll have like a two hour long discussion in the van about which songs we should add in or take away. Wait, so you're going to change? Uh, do you change your set? this tour you've got 35 minutes every night or not uk leg we've got 35 but are you are you swapping songs we just add in one add in one yeah i stay out of this conversation because it just goes around in a massive circle and we end up <laughs> back at square one so i've given up with it to be honest yeah. but like is tonight's set going to be different from the island uh, shows only with the addition of one song well like, oh, because you realize you've got enough time yeah okay, the start yeah. and the finish and like you know the highlights are still the same but we're just adding in uh, an extra one but yeah, like well, it's like a, a well discussed thing. 
when we're when we're changing the set list up. And from from time to time, like depending on the tour as well, we, we do we do switch things up and like if we've got longer, then we'll we'll like try and space it out so we've got like the the older hits off the first and second albums. And like it is, it is like a conscious decision. We'll try and mix it up a little bit, but at the minute we you, we end on a we end on malicious the start on malicious intent and end on on broken glass. That's that's the the template, and then it, whatever happens in the middle, it's just kind of like. If you like us though, and you've got loads of bangers, it is hard to fit them all in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Fucking modest <laughs> truth. Uh, yeah, no. I, I, the more albums we release, the more it's like, well, what? <coughs> what do you cut? Because you have to play the singles, but often the singles aren't the ones that are the most fun to play. They're just the biggest songs. Yeah. So songs like on our next tour, we got like Second Death is like my favorite song to play. It's got the best breakdowns, the best stray breakdown, but it wasn't a single. So it's getting axed because we've got new singles. Yeah. yeah. Same for us with Karma. Yeah. Like, it always pops off. We love it's very difficult to get through, but I love playing that song, but yeah, because we didn't release it as a single. Um it yeah, we never really quite makes the cut. We did it at Bloodstock and Will from Lorna Shaw came out and like we put that video out on YouTube and it, That's money. That's yeah. money that views on that. Yeah, yeah. Sh- shouts out Will. The guy's fucking amazing. Viral dude. <laughs> yeah, he com- he he comes in and, and absolutely killed it. And that, that video has gone done really well on YouTube. Um, it's got more views than most of our music videos. I think, yeah. actually. <laughs> That's what I mean. The fucking the, the the like the weird viral the viral shit is not an album, and the press cycle and the press agents and even managers need to like sort of realise instead. They're being. I feel like everyone's being really stubborn, and they're like. You need an album. This is how we do it. There's three months before. Oh, but there's a single, uh, but you don't announce the album. And then there's the second single, and you announce it's part of the album. But the first single was actually on the album as well, but they didn't know that. Then you've got three months of press. Then the album comes out, and then that's fucking it. Yeah. But yeah. it needs to be more. And that's what I mean. You know, like when it ends after them three months, like the, that's it. And then like then it's like, oh, you just kind of left to fend on your own. But my my argument is like you need to be keeping on. With that. And that's why I asked Will to come and do that thing because. I was like, this is a good opportunity. He he's down. Yeah. I'm down. Let's 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 make it it kind of like its own single by bringing Will out, and then everyone's asking for Will to come on the the, the on the actual track. On they want a, they want us to re-record it with Will on it, and it's and you should fucking do that. I'd be down. So fucking easy. You just get his stems and then get him to do it. That's so easy. Yeah. But I bet you there'll be fucking managers and all sorts going. Oh no, because it's so weird. Like, oh no! Oh, maybe maybe we shouldn't do that. Just fucking everyone. Everyone has goldfish attention spans at yeah. the moment because of uh, fucking TikTok and all that shit. So you need to. I've seen it with so many bands. Bands that aren't even good. I'm not even gonna fucking throw them under the bus. But like, go on. No, but uh, <laughs> Kyle, we were talking yesterday. Who can we shit talk? Um, <laughs> I tell you what, it's one of the bands we said we can't shit talk. But like, single after single after oh, single yeah. after single after single after single after single after single, and then it's like. They're, because of that, their Spotify monthly listeners are massive all across the year. And because of that, then they get playlisted more. And because of that, they're getting... They're, this is not just the band I'm talking about, but you get more tours because people go... Well, they, the look, they look at yeah. the fucking numbers, but the numbers can be juiced in various ways. I want to start doing, like we're talking about, I just want to do... How many tracks are on the album? Ten. How many singles? Ten. When we finish the album... And if we get the first mix and we agree it, single comes out. No fucking, do a radio head, just fucking drop it. No, like, man, man, who's going to man the press? <laughs> it's not fucking Spider-Man. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It, I mean, it'd be interesting to see if it worked, like, how, how, how it was received. I feel like there's, like there's bands not necessarily in, like, metal, uh, metal and alternative music, whatever, that are doing that. Like I know, like DMAs from Australia, they're like indie prog, whatever they are. They don't, they don't tell anyone or something. I swear, when they, when yeah. they drop, it just fucking pops up on Instagram one day. It's like, yeah, the song's out now. I'm like, oh, sound, yeah. And then I'm, I'll go and watch it rather than like, oh, we have a tune coming out on the 13th of July, 2024. Make sure you're there at 9 p.m. To, yeah, and like, fucking hell, like I have to set a reminder to just check out this song that might be shit. Fuck yeah, me. and the way the algorithm works as well. The post that the band makes about make sure to make sure that you're there at 3 p.m., 
that post gets all the fucking traction yeah. because yeah. Every, everyone, yeah, everyone goes, oh yeah, amazing, blah, 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 blah. So the actual release gets less from the algorithm, yeah. which is fucking dumb. Yeah. yeah, and these labels are like, oh, post twice a day, three yeah. times a day, just absolutely ruins all the algorithm. Yeah, no, I've, the more I do this, the more I do the podcast, the more I learn from like just experience, not... Oh, this person did business studies five years ago about music because <laughs> music industry changes every fucking second. The more of this I do, the more I realize like there's a different way to do everything and no one's doing it yet. Even with like TikTok, bring me fucking Can You Feel My Heart got bigger than it ever was again because of TikTok and then the band got even more massive because of that. And that's like essentially releasing a single from a 10 year old album yeah <laughs> like, think that's the, and that's happened loads like the amount yeah. of songs that have just come back after like um it's like that dun, 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 dun. give me your give me your the amount of people that was like on tiktok getting smacked nice. in the face yeah yeah and that was nice <laughs> <laughs> but they're like the amount of people who are getting the slap in the face or something and that tongue that song just went like back into the charts like yep. straight away and it's it's like it's it's mental like but, the power that it has but there is a flip side to it which I kind of like because it still means there's no like one formula because now you're also getting people who are deliberately trying to go viral on TikTok. Like, oh, the new chat, oh, here's our new single. And the challenge is smash this and cut your own throat with it. And then like just hoping it goes fucking, obviously not that, but like hoping it goes viral and then you just fucking cringe. Bro, that's literally me. <laughs> <laughs> I literally yesterday put up a video. What did you do? Uh, fucking hell. On Instagram. <laughs> what did you do? Can I just show, are you, can I show you? Have I got you on Instagram? Pretending he was going to bed and then turn around and you and was upside down. Hang on, hang on. Oh, I like funny shit. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, he's good for that. We used to have Vine, you see. Do you remember Vine? <laughs> that, see, that's funny. Yeah. No, that's funny. I mean like a band releasing a single and they're like... We want to see you do this to the song. It's like, that's not how it works. There's still, I'm saying the industry has to change, but your shit still needs to be good. You can't just fucking yeah. have a turd with a viral fucking campaign behind it. And probably, yeah. It probably is. Dance challenge. Like stuff like that. Yeah. See, that shit, I feel, is getting, there's too many people doing it. The other thing that's, that's insane is people doing, like, a, a fully paid. YouTube ad, but it's the whole song. You've seen that? No, I haven't seen oh, that. Oh, that's a pretty bad one. It's like, they're, how's that work? So they're paying, it's like a, a workaround. You pay the, you pay to put an ad on YouTube, but you pay for like at the beginning of a Bring Me the Horizon music oh, video. Wait, but the no, whole yeah. ad is your band single because you sound a little bit like Bring Me the Horizon. And there's labels pumping so much money into that. Fucking scamming. <laughs> Just make good music. Yeah, yeah. I was just trying to set one of them up for guilt trip. <laughs> Were you actually? <laughs> yeah. Were you actually? So I won't right now. I won't so, no, but no, you, no, that, that. So you think that's a good idea? Well, you're allowed to. You're allowed you to disagree with me. I am a diva, but I will. <laughs> well, trial and error. We'll see how it goes. I mean, to be it, fair, I, 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 now I know what you're on about. Like, I, I have. I've never like gone and actively like found the song again, but I have I have heard a good song on one of them adverts before. Do you know the thing that annoys me about it though is that if it's not like I don't I disagree that it's a good idea, it's that there will be so much good music, potentially better music, that can't afford to do that. Yeah. That if that becomes the norm, it's like how do you become a band? It's like, oh, you have to pay money to YouTube. It's like Fucking is turning this into the most capitalism yeah. that I can think of, and there'll be bands that can't afford that that are fucking sick. But on the flip side, sorry, just talking out loud. On the flip side, maybe that'd be cool because there'll still be underground cool bands. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. I'm 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 too old to be young, and I'm too young to be old. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know what I'm talking about. I'm just talking out loud. Yeah. Um, we're an hour in. How long was the Wilkie and Josh podcast? Probably about the same as this. So Right, well, we need to talk more then. Well, no, yeah, because we've got, <laughs> we're going, we're, I've done their dream festival. Yeah, we've rinsed sleep tokens. And what now we, we go, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly the same formula <laughs> as <laughs> Malev podcast. Um, the thing is about this is, again, with press, 
Well, I found what I get when I get a message about, oh, will you do this band, blah, blah, blah. Here's the album, blah, blah, blah. I literally feel like saying almost nine times out of ten to the press agent, like, no one cares about us talking about the album unless they murdered someone while making the album. Or tried to have but, someone murdered. Hey, <laughs> that's a, it wouldn't be a downbeat podcast episode without a as a lay dying fucking roast uh, but like like people will listen to it and be like oh these lads seem pretty cool I'll check out the band and then if the music's good then they fucking like it they're not gonna nothing we could say other than like oh when we were writing this song fucking con smoke PCP and killed a fucking sex worker and they <laughs> nothing nothing's gonna make them go and check out the music <laughs> Like, they're going to check out the music because you're on the fucking podcast. So what we're going to do now is the Dream Festival section, which is quite hard to do with two people. But uh, Wilkie and Josh's were good, was a good one. Yeah, Wilkie's kind of summed it up for me. No. Which no, sucks. No. <laughs> but, I'm going to write... I'm, we're going to go... We're going to go from the start. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And we'll so, see if anything changes. No, don't, don't you sew. I'm sewing. <laughs> Go on then. I'm sorry because, <laughs> because people, I appreciate that you know uh, you know the system, but then someone will go come straight in with what their big the big band they want is. It's like no, I've got to tease it in. There's got to be some festival foreplay. What country is the festival happening in? Thailand. See, love it. What were you about to say before I said that? What were you gonna start this with? Just need a room for every different genre. You've got your garage room, your house. But I see, room, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I was right to cut you off because that's <laughs> right, fucking. Thanks. That's ten minutes time. <laughs> Save me. That's ten minutes time. Thailand. You're saying Thailand? Where are you saying? Agreeing or you got? A different... I'm agreeing. I mean, my my only request is that it's somewhere hot and yeah, near a beach right. and just like Thailand's a bit strict actually. Where's the less it... less rules than that? Philippines. Now lots of rules there. What are you, the rule master? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. The only You're thinking where's the death penalty if you get caught with things. I thought you changed. <laughs> <laughs> it's hypothetical. Come oh, on. Yeah, well, Give me no, a break. This, this is a dream festival, so hypothetical. You know, let me, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but you know, Thailand's recently legalized weed. In a hypothetical situation, maybe we're in Thailand and they've decriminalized all drugs and fun. Yes. Then we'll go for it. Okay, so we're going for <laughs> Thai, a, a version of Thailand that's recently decriminalised all activities. <laughs> Quite a lot of activities are. Make it sound like we're fucking junkies. <laughs> he did it. No, I agree though, because yeah, the, yeah. I, I've been to Thailand before. I don't, yeah. And like, the, the police would stop us to just search us in case we had anything. Mm. And obviously if you get rid of fucking the need for police... So we're in a, a policeless Thailand. Thailand, no feds. <laughs> Thailand with no feds. Love it. <laughs> Love that. Uh, are you agreeing with the Thailand, no feds? Yeah, I'm down for that. I'm down for that. <laughs> Weather's good. Um, what is, we'll go, what is your accommodation before I go anywhere? So I'm going to go with, with this one. Um, anything similar to what we had on the Malta. Uh, the- Bring me the Rising Weekender, which was... A really nice hotel with some nice gardens, really nice kind of pool to bar area. Um, Audi S3 to take you anywhere. Audi S3, yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll fly yours out. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Um, don't, because people drop off the Patreon. Oh, <laughs> it seems to be doing all right. <laughs> Listen, this costs a lot. I still need your pound. If anything, I need two pounds. This is still not at his kitchen don't finished pound, either. Oh, don't fucking. <laughs> Dox my kitchen. <laughs> uh, all right. So, was Malta, Malta was sick then? Malta was amazing. It was like, we, so we, we were out there for a week. All the girlfriends came out and it was just like a, hot, a lads, holi- well, lads and girlfriends holiday. And then somebody stuck a show on the end of it in the middle of this like field. It well, was this camp- dream festival, bollocks, that was one. Yeah, because that was pre, when I did Wilkie and Josh, that was pre that, that, Malta thing and then I saw the Malta thing and I was like that's pretty much their dream festival you not like, fancy it? Yeah, no I, I I was like the, the podcast got to the le- it's got to the level where I'm like these things are happening and I'm like why has no one invited me <laughs> <laughs> like not being that guy but I'm like maybe maybe I fucking they think I'm a diva no no no, no, <laughs> no, like, no, no you'd like, be that diva why that's... am I not 
doing shit there. That would have been fine. That would have been fun. We would have talked, yeah. Yeah. That's, but, that's but I mean to like thank you, but I mean to like do a podcast. Oh yeah, thing. yeah. I fucking fly the you light could out. That would have been a sick opportunity to be fair. Like, yeah, no, been they, sick. They've missed. The, they've dropped the ball on that. That's what yeah. I'm saying. I don't think I'm arrogant to think that, that no. we're talking about. You need to fucking TikTokify everything. Yeah. Free fucking press. Yeah. None of these fucking. And no offense to the people that they bring to these fucking things for, to do press. Oh, Malta had the. Uh, we wear black people. Fair enough. Yeah, that's probably why I didn't get to go. But, like, bring me as well. Yeah, Malta 2.0, <laughs> bring Craig. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Otherwise, it's sexist now. <laughs> you bring a boy. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, but we're in no fed Thailand. No fed Thailand. We've, we've, got got a, we've got a nice hotel with a pool. Someone someone who can bring your drinks to your... your we've got a runner. They can bring you anything you yeah, need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you, had, like... If I actually played India once and we actually had Did a runner and we actually had a hotel with a pool and we had a guy that would just like come up, felt a little bit, uh, a little bit slavey. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, no, like we tipped him heavily, but he'd like yeah. come up and be like, if I come out of nowhere and be like, would you like another beer? And I'd be like, <laughs> well, yes, I would. And I was like, I was overly tipping because I was like, this, well, this feels fucking weird. Yeah. But, uh, so you've got one of those, but it is, you know, they're being paid handsomely. It's not... Uh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're having they're a good the time. They're, on, <laughs> they're not on the books. They're not declaring anything. They're taking oh, right, pure yeah. stone, old ca- stone cold cash. Nice. Everything. But they're also on a decent wage. Everything is fair trade here. Yeah. We're, we're in a part of the world. It's quite easy to human traffic. So... <laughs> So I mentioned human trafficking. I mentioned child abuse. Why, where else can we go? Um, so, what? This is a weird question, but I just want to know. No, not as weird as anything else I've said. But like, what is? What floor is your hotel room on? Well, mine's a villa with a massive pool, jacuzzi, spa facilities, Come slippers. On. Slippers on site, what, dressing gown. What uh, spa facilities? Um, any treatment you need, facial massage, full body massage. Yeah. Um, not a weird one, just a proper back rub. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the, the weird ones, right, that's often annoying, especially in that part of the world. There are quite a lot of... It's hard to get an actual good massage because you, you go rest. for a massage and it's like, well, they're either good at doing a massage or they're good at wanking. <laughs> so no in between there's no in between <laughs> talking from experience so like, so like yeah so you <laughs> go you'll go to get a massage be well up for a massage and it's just like a fucking little rub <laughs> and then they want to jerk you off and the rubber glove comes on then they want to jerk <laughs> <laughs> we're in Thailand <laughs> rubber glove um, that's the environment and, and then they'll like or it be vice I mean it's not vice versa but I imagine There'd be people who are trying to go for a tug and they're simply getting a rug. <laughs> <laughs> trying to go for a tug and you're just coming out just exactly, really come, relaxed. Come out really, really relaxed. <laughs> I, went, I went in, um, funnily enough, it was in Chef. I went to get, uh, that day I went to get a massage and uh, when I was, like, there's obviously a changing room, I was just, just a normal massage for the record. I'm not going, I'm not frequenting these places. I'm being funny. Uh, I went and it was like a room to get changed before the massage and there's a massive sign like the death penalty sign that you get when you go and it was like we essentially said we will not jerk you off in like game <laughs> capital so I was just like how many times must that happen oh yeah for like it was like huge fucking bold like almost like you know the meme font like impact it was like impact and it was like we will not touch your genitals or yeah. something like you gotta that. think how many times are they getting like dodgy blokes going in like and yeah you gotta think like, at some point that's gonna get fucking annoying well annoying it's like especially if you've if you've spent like years and years training like, training to be a masseuse and then you've got some fucking Desmond from <laughs> Parsons Cross coming in asking for a, asking him to wank him off yeah, I'd be fucking livid and all yeah, I'd be putting true. an impact font sign up and be like piss off also if you're the sort of person that Wants to get wanked off by someone else, like just f- familiarize yourself with some of the apps and the uh, websites available. <laughs> Don't just go to some random massage place. Yeah. I'm not talking from experience, some experience. <laughs> um, okay, 
Back to the festival. We're fedless. <laughs> <laughs> We're fedless in Thailand. Villa. You in a hotel or you in the same villa? Same villa? Um, separate. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah separate, yeah. Like, like, We've got like, a communal area for the vibes. Yeah, communal area where the pool is, but the villas all feed onto this, like, one, this one little, well, one big pool area. Jet right. skis next to the beach. Nice, yeah. This is very like the other one. Yeah. Who, so Malev's playing. Who's your headliners? We're playing, but we don't have to play. Like we can watch someone else fill in and play our tunes, and we can pit to it. Yeah, nice, that's, that's, that's good. I love that. I've not had that yet. I've not actually thought about that. Okay, oh, that's a rate shot. Hang on, hang on, <laughs> but hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go on. I just want to know who's, who's on vocals. That's what I'm literally. That's what I'm going to segue here to. So now you've, op- you've opened it. You've <laughs> what from fucking Martin Defile? <laughs> Martin Defile. <laughs> right, Nearly happened. That what's he up to? Um, I think he's just got a proper, ju- proper job. <laughs> Has he? Yeah, yeah, shout out, man. R- R.I.P. Um, the, okay, so if Malev's playing, but it's not you, so you're watching and pitting and whatever, who's the lineup? Who's fake Malev? That's a tough one. You reckon you could hack it? Fuck no. You're, no. There's a feat. I could yeah, do the no. hands, I couldn't do the feet. Sure you could. No, you, your feet are better than mine. If I was going to say a drummer, you'd, you'd be... Top three. You've, you've got to learn it and do it for this fest. I appreciate that and I love that. I could, some of your kick drums, I, I couldn't do it. I definitely couldn't do it. Fair play. Cheers, pal. Hands, I fucking got you on hands. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> feet, there's no way. I, I'm not saying I've got you as in I'm better as in I could do the blasting, I could do all the fast shit. My feet just don't go fast. It's fucking annoying. Well shit. <laughs> so who's going to do it? Not me. Uh, I get I get Machine Gun Benny on it. He's uh, runners up at the minute. I think Machine Gun Benny. He's yeah. improving rapidly. Have you seen him on Insta and that? MGB Play, plays in Tsunami. Yeah, big he's lad. Fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven All right, foot. cool. He's on drums. All right, um, seven foot. Yeah, he's right tall. Yeah, he's a big lad. Confirmed seven foot though, or you're being no confirmed. Yeah, I had Holy to go like that. Holy shit. Yeah, talk yeah, to him fuck me yeah. basketball game afterwards anyway <laughs> uh, so if we're, to, if, we're to, if we're talking hypothetically obviously Machine Gun Benny's on drums Machine Gun Benny's on drums the only person that's gonna hold a, a, a crown to Khan is Kirk Crowbar so he, <laughs> he'd have to fly nice in. he'd have to jump in um, I think we'd, in, for Josh probably uh, what's his lad from uh, Lamb of God Mark Morton we get yeah, you can do that. Um, bass, fucking anyone can replace Milky. <laughs> now nah, we'll get Barry from Nasty. Barry from Nasty. Yeah, that's that's yeah. Milky's idol. <laughs> <laughs> he drinks he drinks ten cans minimum on stage. Shouts out Barry. I love this. Who's you though? I don't know. No, I don't. I don't. Oh, you got to pick. You got to pick. Because this lineup's awesome. Um, Jaster. Oh, that that is so. I mean, heart. Jasper too obvious. Kirk's already too, ob- in it. too obvious. All right, who are you picking? Uh, what Chimera Mark? Not got the range, has he? No, he's not. He's not. I mean, he's a bit right wing these days. I was about oh, to say. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, you want to? He's fine. I feel no, like pre- he's one no of those, I feel like he's like. Sometimes we say something. I'm like, you don't really believe that. You just <laughs> want. You just want the fucking tweets to yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 poking the bell. I'm sticking with Jasta. All right, he, yeah. He's my he's my idol. So fucking yeah, he can come and fill in for me if when he if he's got a free moment from making fucking pasta or whatever he's, <laughs> whatever he's up to. Yeah, that's a good lineup. I like that. Okay, so Fake Malev's playing. Who's headlining? Drake. See, I, I don't even rate Drake that much. Like I, I still do. So Drake, Always will do. I think the Take Care album was good. Everything else afterwards has been a bit shite, but. My music taste compared to the rest of the lads is quite different in terms of like I like a lot of like European rap and like Afro beats and stuff like that and like German Afro beats specifically. So like that is a very specific genre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so like the rest of the lads aren't. It's not really their thing. So Did I say Drake. I meant Cold Hard Truth. <laughs> <laughs> Cold Hard Truth headline. Drake supporting. Yeah. Um, who's your headliner? Um. I think I just have one of the German rappers that I like Bone. He's a guy called Bone Bones MC. He's fucking massive in Germany, selling out arenas on the daily. But with having Chow Bone or not? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, 
All right, this is no fun because I don't know any of these people other than Drake that I don't care about. Um, <laughs> Gridiron. Gridiron, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, Grid- so Gridiron playing same, every single this song. Is, this is the same fucking festival. Yeah. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, great man's. Yeah, yeah but I like that because that confirms the tight knit spice girlification <laughs> of Malev. Yeah. I think Josh's and Cons would be a lot more grebby. Don't yeah, they'd they'd be having on like forty watt sun, Lama God, oh, yeah, he's Pantera. Playing. Forty watt sun's playing. Shit, to we got a forty a warning shirt. Oh. See that? <laughs> Fuck yeah. Where's yours? Upstairs. Oh, I'm nice. gonna go get it. Nah, it's alright. I've got, I've got I literally have got one. <laughs> um if anyone doesn't know the band warning, UK Doom. That's it's, that's for the after party though. When yeah, fucking when you want so when you hang, on, you, hang, on, hang on, you want warning at an after party. It's gonna make it, maybe not actually. If, yeah. if anyone doesn't know, Warning is a UK doom band, and it is. I would go as far as to say the most depressing music I've ever heard. That's I just to start Begley talking. <laughs> Begley's you there. You can then. go watch them for a bit. Begley's there. Yeah. Um. All right, I'm, I'm keeping Warning on the thing because now my ears are pricked up. We could, yeah, we could have a sad room. <laughs> the like, sad room. We could have a uh, yeah sad room where it's like, love we'll Drake doing his solo. Doing the singy stuff. Singy, yeah, the solo stuff. Shortly followed by... Con's acoustic set. (laughs) Followed up by warning. Warning and Drake together at last. (laughs) (laughs) Love that. That's a bit of me. That's fucking funny. All right, we're going to take that. What's uh, food? What's your food? Oh, yeah, Michelin star. Five star kit. I'd, I'd be going. Nah, I'd be Mackey's going. Mackey's tent. I'd be going for like if we're in time. But <laughs> you just went fucking Michelin star. <laughs> Mackey's tent. Something for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd be down for the Mackey stand, hundred percent. But if we're in Thailand, like my, some of my favorite food is Asian style, so like I'd want the local delicacies really, and I don't want it served on like a, a plate, like a massive plate with a leaf and a drivel of sauce. I want it served off like. Street food vendor. Yeah, street food vendor. You've got Thai street food, yeah. but you're not going to get sick from it because sometimes it's like you watch them drop something on the floor and then you just fucking scrape that back up. <laughs> just turn the fucking heat up. Yeah, yeah. So you get the flavour. Yeah, like, I, w- I want it served like... I li- like My favourite style of food is like Asian style, eating in the street, off like the bonnet of a car or something like that. Oh, right, like, okay. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, I like going for a nice posh meal, but like my favourite, that's my fit, like... Anthony Bourdain shit. Yeah, like eating in the in the culture, in the environment, that's like, that, well, I buzz off that. I don't know what, I don't know what it is, I just... Do you not get scared, scared about food poisoning? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I do it, but then I freak out after it. Like that was really nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Am I going to be sick? Am I going to be sick? Yeah, I you roll miss, the dice, the show. I've never really touched wood. I've never really had it like... Bad. Oh fuck! I have had it bad. I had really? it fucking Wendy's in America. Did yeah, I get fuck, you? Fuck Wendy's. Wendy's fucked me up. I got real bad food poisoning, and I've <laughs> never had it in any of like. Fuck! We went to Kenya and we ate like ate in this play in the middle of the fucking forest in Kenya. Did and you we play had, there? Yeah, we played like a, a show in Nairobi, and we did like Sick. some some charity work. Um, but but <laughs> that's why we were there. But we were like, might as well play a show. But like. No, like, didn't really get sick. Some people got sick, didn't get sick. But then I'll go to Wendy's in America. Oh, fucking worst food poison I've ever had in my life. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I have got to say, the food selection in America sucks. You don't like it? I don't I rate it at it. all. I fucking hated it. I, I mean, if you want to eat a burger and, like, fried shit, then great. Yeah, that's kind of but, what I want to eat. But not every fucking day, man. Uh, it's just like... It's hard. It's so hard. What, that they, they're like, Don't be scared of a vegetable. Don't yeah, no, I do agree, but says they. Listen, I'm trying. You know how hard it is to trying to find BBC. I doesn't like veg. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it's hard to try to eat right in America. It's like, come on, lads. Like, yeah, the, you- the coffee game was abysmal. I mean, oh, there was Where good, were there was you good guys coffee fucking playing, but we started in North Carolina and went sort of downwards, <laughs> yeah, downhill. Not a great but start. Then, um, yeah, just the service stations. Oh it's yeah, like yeah, a pint of dishwater. You know yeah, what I'm talking about? Yeah, I oh know. We oh fuck that the fucking yeah, sucked. the massive vats of coffee. Like if you if you want to go and find a really good coffee, like you got to get an Uber twenty minute. Yeah, but you were in an RV. You should have just had a fucking V60 with you. We can't park it anywhere, can you? We do it with your driving. All right. Now you tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got you next time. I got you next time. Um, where the fuck are we at with this Fedless Festival? <laughs> with some fucking German rappers. We got Drake and Warning and the Sad Boy Tent. Uh, Who's doing the boat party? Accommodation. No, the boat party is 
what your dream after party is, but Wilkie happened to say boat party. Are you boat party as well? What's your dream after party? Well, there will be several boat parties of different genre. Yeah. <laughs> Think outside the fucking box. Think so about... Solid crew. Get, get off nice. Playing 21 seconds. No, just yeah. that song. <laughs> again and again and again. <laughs> That's fucking quite a lot of seconds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what... Um, Think outside the fucking the box. The, like, dream after party or just dream thing to do after a show. You might say, do fucking, I want to go and play COD. Do you know what, right? I So I was in MTV Awards in Dusseldorf a few weeks ago. and What the fuck are you doing there? Uh, I'm doing security. In my, Is that, it? That's, that's my day job. He's a bouncer. Why a we, what, in bouncer. Germany? A bit more. Yeah. So I was I, I was over in. Yeah, but wait, wait! You do it in Germany as a job, or you happen to be in I, Germany? I was over there as a consultant. Are you? Oh, I didn't know that, fucking hard man. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> All right. So right, so I'd been, I, I ended up at the MTV Awards after party, and that was kind of how I would imagine our show. So it was in, it was on um, it was on the River Rhine, with the, in like an older a mansion turned nightclub. Yeah, now we're talking. And it's it's glamorous. There's like waiters bringing you canapes, but the canapes are like mini curry versed, mini hot dogs, mini burgers, like fun shit. Not your like starving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not your like your boozy shit. Free bar, and then you've got different rooms, obviously different music, um, and then you're like on the terrace outside. It's all lit up and stuff like that, and they've got like entertainers and stuff like that. Um, and it was sick. It was proper cool, and that's kind of like how I'd imagine. The after party, so like somewhere in Thailand, on the coast, big villa, leading out onto the beach, and you've got different different rooms for different vibes. Outside, so you're a bit more chill vibe. Inside, you've got your your dutty grime and you like, got Sea Dog on the deck screaming here, screaming his bars at you. Who? Hey, what are you, rapper? You're doing some rapping? Uh, only on Sundays. Is it? Um, <laughs> I've given up now. Retired. After Malta, we tried to do it again. You did it in Malta, yeah. It was no nah, in Malta. It was sick. Him and yeah, Wilkie, went off. him and Wilkie had a few bars in Malta. Yeah, we used Is to do it. it? Like, oh, I'd love to see that. I don't know if Wilkie said it on the last one, but like when we were younger, we used to just like come and find our mates DJing at three in the morning, or whatever, and just like storm in, pissed, and grab the mic and waffle would, a load of bollocks. I would love to see it. Yeah, some footage somewhere. But anyway, uh, so yeah, when we got booked for this DJ set in Malta, we were like panicking midweek, like shit, what are we gonna do? And we were like, right, we're just going to stop it, go into baseline, and then just just spray all the bars we used to have from like. Oh, it's literally years ago. what the fucking what their dream festival was like. The <laughs> yeah, yeah. ones. It exactly pretty much that. was like the peak moment of our lives. That's so fucking funny. <laughs> oh, did you? Who was the most famous person at MTV Awards? Um, Taylor Swift. She was there. Taylor Swift. You were securing her. You were the security for Taylor Swift. I escorted her to a dressing room. And you went it. on a night out with Stormzy. Uh, yeah, I went. That, I went to the after party with Stormzy. Is it? <laughs> <Fucking hell. laughs> that's so sick. Um, Are you boys with him? No, not at all. I spoke like two words to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty fucking. But cool, though. I um, met Louis Capaldi. Um, what, what's his face? Um, David Hasselhoff. You were there. David Hasselhoff. He's so big yeah. in Germany. Like, yeah, just a huge, huge star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From back in the day, but still fucking is. Uh, I'm just pulling up your tour dates here because. We are at the end of the podcast, really. I just want to plug some shit for you. you, you, you I don't, don't want to rely on you doing it. <laughs> yeah, so I'll try stuff. and get this out before... Oh, shit. No, you've got three fucking dates left. <laughs> we ain't fucking doing anything. Come to, come to a UK show. If you did, thanks. If you didn't... What else you got coming out. up then? <laughs> what, what else you got coming up? Um, so after this, we are, uh, we're back in the US um, for LDB. Uh, fest, which is gonna be sick. It's like our first proper like, hardcore fest that we. The playing. lineup's fucking mental this Love year. Love that right? lineup, yeah. It's so good. Was it the, the Not Lose Ten Year Anniversary or something? So it's gonna be fucking mental. It's gonna be sick. Um, and then we fly straight from that from the US to Australia for Not Fest Australia. Oh, boys, yeah. killing it. Yeah. Do you know what I got asked to do? You know what we're talking about? Uh, like when I was like, why am I not getting invited? I literally said to NotFest, why am I not getting invited? And then they went, do you want to come to NotFest Australia? And I'm on fucking tour. Uh, so you go. gutted. Uh, why don't you, have you not got someone you can send the brand with, like a fill-in? <laughs> no, because I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good to know though. That's good to know. Yeah, I mean, I, Branch I, out. Yeah. Downbeat LTD. <laughs> 
Am I enough of a diva for it though? I don't know. Oh fuck <laughs> you! I mean, by saying stuff like that, I think you are. I think you're learning. Yeah. Um, you teach me the ways. Yeah. So what? You got LDB? Yes. Yeah, so uh, LDB, not fest. Then a US tour that's not announced yet. US oh, tour, yeah. Oh, I nearly announced earlier. Nearly. I like. Okay. I liked how you saved that. Thank though, you. By the way. Big save. Listen, um, they'll fit. They'll work it out though. When's that getting announced? No idea. Cool. We we find out after everyone else finds out at the minute. So we we all these festivals that we've just been announced for, we find out when they post our name and we get tagged. Oh, there's another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so. it's Sonic Temple is that so, announced? Sonic, yeah, that that got announced the other day. Rockville, we're on the same day at Rockville though, so yeah, Sick. let's fucking go. Hopefully, it's warm. Up fucking Florida in May, it's going to be mental. Love that. Love that. I'm, si- I'm sick. literally of, the best time to go. I'm sick of doing all these winter tours now. Like we've we've done so many <sighs> cold winter tours. We need some. He's we need a some... diva. He's back. That's he's it, a man. diva. That's yeah, it. You're in. Go, you're in. Come on. All right. <laughs> Malev will not tour in the winter. <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking like, come on. Don't stop expecting to see us in January. I'm sick of it. There must be. There's a perfect <laughs> way to do it though. I remember once I had a perfect year where it was a. Uh, you know, you do Australia in January. Mm. Then you do like America in the spring because quite a lot of it's still hot. Then you come back to Europe for the summer and then just repeat that. Yeah. Then you avoid Asia winter. at the end of the year. Yeah. That'd avoid nice. winter. Yeah. I think we were like going to pl- originally do something like that 20, 2019. But then, and then COVID happened, obviously. So the world got destroyed. Yeah. Well, we didn't even really talk about that once, which is quite good. Good. Fucking sick. Can't yeah, yeah same. It. Can't be yeah. fucking asked. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Go check Malevolence out. Go chuck me a quid because this costs money. Um, and do you know what when I was setting everything up today I was so annoyed because I'm a diva but like but it's, it's mainly because I don't know what, and it's probably why I was a diva when we met I'm sorry to keep going on about that I don't know what I'm doing with anything but for some reason I'm in whatever position I'm in even like playing a show I don't know what I'm fucking doing I don't know where I am I don't know what setting all this shit, shit up is so one day I'm just going to give up unless everyone gives me money <laughs> um, buy a Malev t-shirt Malevolated.com. MLVLTD.com. Come to a show. It's quite a fucking empire. I think between the downbeat and you guys, like, we just fucking... Every time I see anyone's at a show... Killing it. We got it fucking locked. (laughs) We got it fucking locked. Uh, Buy a downbeat t-shirt while you're fucking on the internet. If you're in America, by this point, there might be an American downbeat store, www.thedownbeat.at. Enjoy your show. I will come to the show. The amount of people who've come here... And I haven't gone to their show. You don't have to, pal. <laughs> it's two seconds away and you're on nice and early. I'm coming. I'm definitely coming. And I want to see you band. Um, yeah, so da- and disclaimer, if you tell me you don't want this to come out, other than the two edits that we announced that we were going to do, uh, I'm going to release it anyway because I've fucking spent ages setting up. Yeah, so uh, thank you, guys. Thank you for having us, Cheers, Greg. Bob. I really uh, enjoyed it. We'll have to get Likewise. Con on on his own, I guess. Yeah. Oh, he'll fucking panic if you get him on his own. Really? He'll panic. It'll be all right, but like the first 20 minutes is going to be like sat there with a red face. Maybe we'll do a full <laughs> bander somehow. Or if I do one of these festival things. Yeah, if you're watching and you're one of the people that could ask me to do a festival, it will cost you the flight and a grand. Yeah. All right. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>